What is up, you beautiful people? My name is Trevor. Uh, welcome back to Above Average. We got a quick little video. Uh, we're gonna talk about some hockey today. Uh, not a heck of a whole, uh, not a heck of a whole lot has uh, been going on lately. You know, it's off season. Like I said, we're kind of in, you know, settled mode. Um, but yeah, there is some things that I kind of have been seeing and I kind of want to talk about because uh, you know that's that's what the channel is for to talk. Okay, um, yeah, so without further ado, um, if you're not subscribed, uh, feel free to subscribe, it's free. Why not? <laughs> Leave a like too while you're at it. Um, yeah, but without, uh, or with that being said, let's just dive right into it. Okay, so the Women's Team Canada uh, wins gold courtesy of Marie-Philippe Poulin. Uh, Poulin, Poulin, something like that. Um, yeah, so this is huge. Kind of talked about this in my last episode. Uh, she's like Captain Clutch like, right now. Like they, they showed a photo of like all of her like gold medal goals and she's got like four on her belt or I think this is her third or whatever. But um, yeah, I'll show the video. This was just insane. Like uh, they were they were down to nothing against uh, the Yankees. The Americans, of course, I call them Yankees because suck it. Um, yeah, but they were playing uh, the Americans and then um, they were down, you know, 2-0 and uh, they came back, you know, tied up 2-2. Went into overtime, and then what does she do? She goes bar down. You could not have placed the puck any better than what she did. She sniped it, she absolutely ripped it. It went bar, and then post, down, right behind the freaking line, and then out, and then no one really, it was kind of like a Patrick Kane, no one really knew it went in except for her. And, uh, but yeah, then uh, like not even, maybe it was like 30, 40 seconds later, uh, the sirens go off the horn or whatever and then yeah, that's that's gold and that's gold and That's what I'm talking about another dominant win over the freaking Americans, which is great because that's what we like to see um, Yeah, but on that topic. So uh, yeah, just two shout out to the girls, um, you know brought home gold That's great. They won gold in uh, soccer and they got gold in hockey like come on. Let's go Canada's women just are great at sports. So that's great. But um, yeah on uh, that topic. This is huge. This is huge um, it was just confirmed that the NHL is allowing NHLers to play in the 2022 Winter Olympics in China. Okay, uh, this is sweet. I mean, I was I was at the 2010 Olympics with Brady, uh, and I mean that was like one of you know I was young. I don't really remember a heck of a whole lot, but um, yeah, one of the greatest moments of my life, and like just seeing Crosby, Niedermeyer, Pronger, Luongo, Broder, you know, all these great players, and uh, just to be able to have that again. I mean. Honestly, like I Olympics are probably like best on best hockey. That's probably my favorite thing. I like the World Juniors, you know. I love NHL, but like Olympic hockey, like that's like my uh, I, I love it. And so just to be able, just the thought of you know Crosby and McDavid and McKinnon and you know Stammer if he goes like Hall, you know there's so many people you can have you know McCard, Dougie Hamilton, you know Braden Point, you know Mark Stone. For Canada, like Sean Couturier, like it goes on and on. Like they're gonna have John Tavares, Brad Marchand, uh, Patrice Bergeron. Like they're, like offensive wise, like they're gonna be so good and it's gonna be so fun. Like theoretically, you could probably have McDavid, Crosby, and McKinnon on the same line. Like I don't know if that's the call or you know if that's the play, but that's sick. Just the idea of that just really ugh, gets me going. So yeah, the, that is awesome. Uh, and this is gonna be great. You know, the last time they were in the Olympics was in Sochi, 2014, which feels like forever ago. Like I was still in, I was still in high school then. Like that's crazy. So um, yeah, like this, this is just great. And it's also great because a lot of other teams, you know, especially the United States, they've really, you know, made a name for themselves, especially lately. When you look at the players that have come up like now and like that they had like they had like Justin Abdelkader on their last like Olympic team like that's there's no way that's gonna happen now you've got like the likes of Matthews who wasn't there you know in the last Olympics Eichel you know Johnny Gaudreau uh, Quinn Hughes you know Seth Jones like they're they're gonna be a really good team as well and they're actually you know they're top heavy you know they got some pretty good like scoring depth but like they're really They've got good defense and uh, they got some really good goaltending. But uh, I'm gonna kind of talk about that in another video. Like uh, me and Brady, hopefully we're gonna get uh, our predictions, our roster predictions, who we think. Uh, we think that'll be fun. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. So let me know if you guys would like that and leave a like, go ahead. But yeah, so that is sweet. Um, well, I'll talk about that in another video. We'll kind of go a little bit more in depth, but I just wanted to say like, that's just, uh, ah. I'm just so pumped like and the crazy thing is is like the summer olympics just happened right because of covid obviously they had and they were held back a year but then the winter olympics are like literally like six months away so 
No, not even. I don't even know. It's in February. So that's that's great. Um, oh, and like, you know, Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, like that's like that's like Gretzky Lemieux, like back in the eighties, like I or nineties or whenever the stuff they were doing back then. I wasn't even born then, but so that's like it's gonna be like the passing of a torch and you know obviously Crosby should be wearing the C and I think he will be, but I mean, I think realistically it's gonna be Connor's team and like I think Crosby's gonna be like, hey man, like go out there, do your thing, like, you know, I'll 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 be the leader, you know, I'll be the vocal guy in the room. But like, you know, as far as like skills, like I mean you gotta put out McDavid, right? Like so yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit more in another video, but I'm just just the thought like especially McKinnon and Crosby having them on the same line and even Mitch Marner like could be on that line or Matthew Barzell just so much speed anyway I'm kind of rambling rambling on quite a bit but that's just so exciting and I cannot wait for that and uh, yeah so we'll uh, do a video pretty soon here but also in the news the Carolina Hurricanes offer sheeted Jesper Kotkaniemi. Um, this is insane. It doesn't really happen that much, but it worked. This is the first time I think I've ever seen one actually go through. Obviously, the Montreal Canadiens offer sheeted uh, Sebastian Ajo a few summers back, and um, Carolina Hurricanes. It was kind of like vengeance. Like the the tweet was the exact same that uh, the Montreal used when they offered it to uh, Sebastian Ajo. So. Um, but then it was funny because I thought it was vengeance and just revenge kind of thing like uh, you did it to us We're gonna do it to you, but apparently uh, They really liked the player. That's what uh, the GM for uh, The Carolina Hurricanes came out saying he's like no this wasn't about revenge We really really liked the player, but at 6.1 million dollars I don't know if I like Jesper Kotkaniemi that much I mean that's quite a bit you're paying him more than you know a decent amount of players like he's getting paid you know, honestly, right around the same like dollar amount as like uh, Nathan McKinnon, and you know he's getting paid more than like Brian Nugent Hopkins and some of those kind of players. But uh, that's surprising, you know. Kotkaniemi, he had like a good rookie campaign, you know, and a lot of people were mad when he was drafted. When he was like a lot of Habs fans didn't like that pick, and then he kind of you know he proved them wrong. But then he had somewhat of a sophomore slump. So, um, you know, at $6.1 million, like, you know, to, and especially to lose a first and third round pick, I don't know if that's the right call. I mean, time will tell, you know, it's like one of those things they could be geniuses, but at $6.1 million, I think this year that's not really much of, that's, that's not a really good deal. But the good thing is it's only one year. And if he's bad, they're like, they're most likely going to sign him like more realistically at four or five. So, um, yeah, but to lose a first and second round or first and third round pick, uh, I don't know if like if I was the Carolina Hurricanes fan, I wouldn't be too happy. I'd be like, ah, eh, like we're losing a first and second, and we're spending six point one on this guy. That's not really worth that right now. But who knows? Maybe he will be. You know, like he could really click. You know, Montreal, the media. You know, a lot of players don't really uh, have the. You know, the what? What, what should I say? Uh, it, it, let's just say it's just tricky to play in Montreal because they watch your every move and so who knows maybe he might be doing a little bit better in Carolina is definitely not as big as a you know a hockey franchise and so it that might help him it might be what he needs so time will tell but um, yeah uh, just one last thing I kind of wanted to talk about but uh, I saw this the other day and I thought it was kind of funny Apparently, a study made by Bet US, it's either Bet US or Bet Us. I'm pretty sure it's Bet US. But um, yeah, the Edmonton Oilers fan base are the most stressed uh, NHL fan base there is right now. And I can totally, like, I saw that and I was like, that's funny. I feel that. Like, I, I don't know if any other NHL, like, fans or, like, anything like that feel like what I feel like. Because when I wake up, I'm stressed, you know, if Kenny Holland did something bad. If the Oilers do something bad, I'm going to hear about it from a lot of people, including Oilers fans, and it sucks. And it's like, you know, the more and more I think about it, like, it, it we're kind of just up there. I and mean, it's not as bad as Toronto, but, like, as far as, like, if we do something bad, I feel like we just get crapped on like crazy. So, yes, I 100% I I like, stand by this. Yes, I feel very stressed as an Oilers fan. I, I really do. Like, if we, like... If we do bad, like we get crapped on, you know, obviously, but if we do good, we'll still get crapped on for whatever reason. And it's like, it, uh, <laughs> if the Calgary Flames make a bad signing or if they do something like, you know, uh, the Tanev signing, you know, wasn't really that great, but no one really talks about it. You know, it's like, whatever. If the Oilers did that, it, we, they'd still be talking about it. People would still be talking about it. So it's like, 
you know, stuff really doesn't ever let go if you're an Oilers fan. Like, it just sticks, it stays, and people just remember it, and then they'll buggy about it. And that's what I get stressed about. But, yeah, I kind of just wanted to get that off my chest. I'm very stressed as an Oilers fan. Very stressed. But, yeah, whatever. Comes such as life. <clears throat> but, yeah, so... Right on, uh, that's pretty well all I got for this quick little video. Um, I'll be uploading a fair bit this week, getting back on track and whatnot. Uh, kind of, you know, I talked about it earlier, kind of want to do some Olympic team projections and uh, like roster projections, roster, roster projections. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. And uh, as well as grading other teams um, off seasons because we're only like 36, 37 days away till puck drop, which I cannot wait. So that'll be exciting. Um, yeah, I'll be pumping out a lot of videos this week. So uh, you guys have that to look forward to in your uh, very busy schedules. You can uh, look forward to coming home and watching some uh, above average content. That's, that's what we do. Uh, right on. So yeah, without further ado, um, if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. We talk uh, all things sports, we talk hockey. You know, we've been talking a lot of hockey lately. That's because Big old Brady boy, my uh, other sports guy. I like to talk other sports with him. So, um, yeah, we but we talk a lot of sports. So, um, yeah, if you if you like sports, this is a channel for you. Uh, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Cheers.